Well, we're winding down with our related rates, and today's topic is going to focus on similar triangles and angles with related rates. So let's start off with some similar triangle problems. Question number one. A man six feet tall walks away from a lamppost 24 feet high at a rate of five miles per hour. So let's just stop there and get our picture sketched. So hopefully you can picture a man walking away from a lamppost. So this is a very primitive sketch, but I'm going to call that my lamppost, which is 24 feet high. And I've got a man here who is six feet high. And he's walking away from this lamppost, so I'm just going to make an arrow implying that he's going in this direction. And then let me finish off my triangle, of course. And he is walking a rate at a rate of 5 miles per hour. I'm going to hold off on that for a moment. The question is how fast, A, how fast is his shadow changing? So I want, first of all, where do you find your shadow? Every year somebody tries to tell me this is the shadow. All right, if you go outside and you stand, is your shadow in the air or is your shadow on the ground? Hopefully you know your shadow is on the ground. Now, if my lamp is here and here's my person, I hope you understand that the shadow is this section of the triangle. And I'm going to label that S for shadow. I suggest you do the same. Now, if that piece represents a shadow, I'm going to need to call this section something else. So I'm just going to use this notation here, and I'm going to call that X. You can call it whatever you want. But it's just clearly different than shadow. Shadow is on this side of the man if my light is here. All right, so now it says um, he's walking away at a rate of five miles per hour. So if, if I'm here and I start walking away, hopefully you understand we're describing that, that we're talking about this rate. So I'm going to say dx dt is 5. Now, positive 5 or negative 5, well, if I'm walking this way, is that distance getting bigger or smaller here? It's getting bigger, so I'm going to say positive 5. Now, believe it or not, this is one of the easiest questions. We have all the information we need. We just have to identify what we're looking for, and we're finding how fast the rate his shadow is changing. So I am looking for d s d t. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to pull it apart in two triangles just to make it even more obvious. Let's start with the big triangle. Okay, so I've got that big triangle, which is the obvious one, and then I've got the triangle that this man creates. And I'll draw that one over here, I'll make it even smaller. And again, I wanted to see two triangles in your notes there. So, if I take the big triangle, I know that this side is 24 feet high. I don't know anything about this side at the moment, but I do know the length of the big side. Now think first, if this was 4 and this was 6, would you say that's a 24 distance or a 10 distance? Hopefully you're saying if that's 4 and that's 6, that's a total of 10 because all you would do is take those two and add them together. So I'm saying this is x plus s. Now in my little guy, my little triangle, my height is 6 and this side is s for shadow. So I'm going to say 6 is to s. Now for those of you that love geometry, this is just a simple geometry problem. Uh, we have what we call similar triangles. Um, and I'm just going to write a ratio basically. And I'm going to say... I have s, s is to x plus s, equals 6 over 24. Okay, so what did I do? I basically said this side over this side, it's the same side of the triangle, I guess, and then this side over this side. Now, you could take the derivative if you want, but I said to myself, I'm finding d s dt, so I'm going to get the s's by themselves first. So I'm going to do a little math. Now, again, hopefully your gut's just saying, Two fractions are equal, cross multiply. So I've got 24s equals 6x plus 6s. And again, I'm going to put my s's on one side. So I'm going to subtract my 6, so I get 18s equals 6x. And since I'm solving for ds dt, I'm going to divide this out and say s equals 6 over 18x. Or I could say that's one third x. Now, notice you haven't done any calculus yet. We simply just wrote a proportion that you did in geometry and solved. Now, I want you to bracket that in, and we're going to take its derivative with respect to time. So, variables don't match. I get d s dt equals 1 third x is just 1 third, and then again, variables don't match d x dt. And if you think back and you look back in your picture, we know dx dt. We said that was changing at a rate of positive 5. And I'll just plug that in. So I basically get ds dt equals 5 thirds. And I believe, 
I already forgot my units. Uh, whoops, I think that was, oh geez, miles, feet per hour? Sorry, feet per hour. So part B to the same question, how fast is the tip of the shadow changing? Now, for years, I thought they were asking the same question, but the real key difference is they use the word tip. They're not talking about the shadow itself. They're talking specifically about this tip of the shadow. How fast is that changing? As he walks this way, how fast is the, the tip of the shadow changing? So I basically said, well, what is that changing? I'm not finding the SDT anymore when it says tip. I'm finding the rate of change of this whole side. So what I want you to do is kind of make a nice big bracket, and we need to represent that whole side. And I'm going to use y, I guess, for that side. So the question is, what is dy dt? All right. And again, I, I kind of always thought they were saying the same thing until I really focused on that word tip. When they talk about tip, they're talking about this whole side. So again, I basically just summed it all up and called it y, so I'm looking for dy dt. So I'm kind of going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make two similar triangles. Uh, I'll start with my big triangle. So it's going to have a height of 24 and a side of y. And now here's where I get creative on my little triangle. This height is definitely 6, but I want to describe this term, this side, using y. So I'm going to say that side is really y minus x. Would you agree with that? If I want to describe this piece of the triangle, instead of calling it s, I'm going to say it's y minus x. Now, why the heck am I doing that? Well, I know dx dt, so I'm trying to use x because I know the x rate of change. All right, if you got that part, then again, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to say 6 over 24 equals y minus x all over y. I'm going to cross multiply before I take my derivative. So I get 24y minus 24x. And then again, I'm going to solve for y because I want dy dt. Um, I'm going to subtract 24. I'm going to get negative 18y equals negative 24x. So y equals 24 over 18x. I can take a 6 out of those, so I could say, or y equals 4 thirds x. Now, again, I haven't done any calculus. I wrote a problem we did in geometry, I cleaned it up, and now I'll take the one piece of calculus and take its derivative. So I get dy dt, because of course the variables don't match, equals 4 thirds dx dt. And here's why I, you know, I wanted to use x, because I know what dx dt is. dx dt is 5. So I get dy dt equals 20 thirds. Um, and again, let me stick my units on there. We have feet per hour. So I don't think they're terrible problems. Once you set them up, the math is actually quite easy. We'll try one more together. A five-foot man is walking at a rate of four feet per hour towards a lamppost that is 12 feet high. So let's just stop there and get that picture drawn. So here's my lamppost, and that is 12 feet high. And I have a man walking towards the lamppost. So I'm just going to denote that with an arrow showing I'm going in this direction. And that man is five feet high. And it says he's walking at a rate of four feet per hour. So I'm going to say this distance in here is four feet per hour. Would you agree with that? That is the, the way he's walking. So the question says, at what rate is his shadow changing? So again, I'm going to represent this section with S, and they're asking for D, S, D, T. All right, so just like we did in the previous problem, if this section we're going to denote with S, then I need to call this section something else. So I'm going to use X in this case. And then again, that represents this section there. This four feet then is dx dt because it is a rate. So once you get the diagram set up, like I said, the math is pretty straightforward. We'll just set up uh, two ratios for similar triangles. So I would say the 5 feet is to 12 feet as the s is to the x plus s. Now again, where am I getting those from? The big triangle is 12 over x plus x. So there's the 12, that's the x plus s. The little triangle is the 5 over the s. And since we want ds dt, my goal is to solve for ds dt. So again, just like we did before, 5x plus 5s equals 12s. 
5x equals 7s, s equals 5 sevenths x. At this point, we'll just take its derivative. So I get 5 sevenths, the derivative of x is dx dt, equals ds dt. And basically, I'm just going to get that 5 sevenths times the rate that I walked, which was 4 feet per hour, to say I get 20 sevenths feet per hour. And there you have it. Now, notice this. Um, back in the directions, it said that he was 4 feet from the lamppost. Did that affect our problem whatsoever? No. I couldn't plug the 4 feet in first for x because it's not a constant. Remember, as he walks, this side is changing. So 4 is not a constant. And then when I took the derivative, I didn't have x in it anywhere. So I didn't actually need that at all. So it doesn't matter how far uh, he is from the lamppost. He is walking at a constant, a shadow, I'm sorry, is changing at a constant speed of 27 feet per second. All right, let's dive into our first angle problem. A ladder 25 feet long is leaning against a house. So again, I'm going to stop and draw that. And the more accurately you draw these pictures and label them, the easier the trig part will be. All right, so I have a ladder leaning, and that is 25 feet long. The other thing I want to do real quickly, of course, is label my sides A, B, and C. So I'm going to say this is my A, this is my B, and this is my C. Therefore, C is 25 feet. It says the base of the ladder is pulled away from the house at a rate of 2 feet per second. So if I take this base of my ladder, bottom, and pull it away from the house, it's moving this way, which means it's getting bigger. So what I've described is the rate of this side, or d, b, d, t, is equal to a positive 2 feet per second. So here's the question. Find the rate, so there's my four-letter word, I am finding the derivative, at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing. So let me just highlight that. I'm finding the angle between the ladder and the wall. Ladder and wall. If you highlight it, that's where I'm going to put my theta. So I am finding the rate at which the angle is changing. So off to the side, I am saying, saying I am finding d theta dt. The rate at which the angle is changing. Specifically, when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall. So when this bottom of my ladder is 7 feet. So I'm basically saying that b equals 7. All right, so once I've labeled my A, B, and C, my goal is then to label any sides that I have. Now, I know two sides. I, this is 7 feet and 25 feet. I can easily get the third. Now, of course, you should know that third without the Pythagorean theorem. That, of course, is a Pythagorean triple, 7, 24, 25. If you haven't had that one memorized, I would commit that to memory. Um, so I can si say side A is 24 feet. All right, so I actually have a lot of information. I know all three sides, and I know the rate of this one side. The next famous question, the one that you're supposed to keep asking yourself in all these problems, is, is there a constant? All right, so let's get that in our notebook, constant question mark. Are any one of these sides guaranteed never, ever to change? Well, as the ladder slides down, clearly this side's changing, and this side's changing because it can slide in and out. But the length of the ladder is never changing. So I do have a constant, and we love that. We know side C equals 25 is our constant. All right, and we love having those constants. Now, since we have an angle, I just want to be clear that we're going to have to use trigonometry to solve this problem. All right, and let's just jot a few key ideas in our notebook. We need trig, and it's probably easiest to pick the side whoops, I should say trig function, we're going to pick the trig function that has the constant in it. And I'll probably pick the trig function that I know the most about. All right, so those are the two things that go through my head. I'm going to pick the one with the constant, and I'm going to pick the one I know the most about. So I'm going to come back, and we're going to do kind of what we've done um, perhaps back in, you know, ninth and 11th grade with our trigonometry. We're just going to go through and we're going to label our angle and label our sides. So I like to put a nice little swoop mark on my angle. And then I want to label my sides, not with A, B, and C, but with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So I would assume hypotenuse is the easiest one to see. So I'm going to put an H on this side across from the right angle. I think adjacent's the next nicest. Adjacent means next to. And if I look at my angle, it is next to these two sides. 
one of them will always be the hypotenuse, therefore this guy must be the adjacent, and the one that goes across the picture is called your opposite side. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to pick the trig functions that I know the most about or, and the one that has the constant. So I am automatically going to pick the H because it's the constant. And the which side do I know more about? Well, I only know the feet here. On this side, I know the feet and the right. So I'm going to pick this side. So out of my sine, cosine, and tangent, and of course I'm saying like so katoa. Okay, so we're really going some nice easy trick here, so Katoa. I'm picking the one with the opposite and the one with the hypotenuse. So of course that's the sine function. All right, so I'm going to say sine theta, and again, we're going to start extremely basic, is opposite over hypotenuse. Now, I'm going to put it in terms of my problem. My opposite side was B, my hypotenuse was C. So now I'm saying sine theta, equals b over c. Okay, now I've done zero calculus, I'm just labeling my trig function. And here's where the first rule comes in. You can plug the constant in before the derivative. Well, we said side c was a constant, so I'm going to rewrite this as the sine of theta equals b over 25. Okay, now you could take the derivative at this point. Let me just show you one more easy mathematical step that will make it even simpler. People don't like taking the derivatives with fractions, so just cross multiply. I'm going to say this is 25 sine theta equals b. All right, now I've killed the fraction and it's no big deal. I just simply cross multiplied. I'm going to wrap this up and take its derivative with respect to time. Now, the only thing to watch for is you actually have two variables. You have theta and you have b. And again, as I read this, this says the sine of theta. So watch your chain rule. So I'm going to get 25 is the coefficient. The derivative of the outside is cosine. Keep the inside. And then the derivative of the inside. Well, theta does not match with t, so this is d theta dt. Equals, the derivative of b is 1, but b does not match my t, so d b dt. And that is truly the only calculus in the problem, is just watching that chain rule. Now the rest of this is pretty simple. I'm going to say 25. This cosine, I am actually going to use the ratio for cosine. So again, I'm going to say cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm going to look at my picture and say, what is the adjacent side and what is the hypotenuse? Well, the adjacent was 24, the hypotenuse was 25. So in place of cosine, I am putting 24 over 25. d theta dt is what I'm looking for. And db dt was just that rate of side b. If I scroll back up in my picture, um, we knew db dt was a positive 2. So I'm going to put 2 here. And now I'm just solving for d theta dt. And look how nice this is. 25 and 24 over 25, those cancel. So I get 24 d theta dt equals 2. Therefore, d theta dt equals 2 over 24 or 1 over 12. Now, because this was an angle, watch my units. It is radians per, uh, shoot, I forgot what we were. I think we were per second. Radians per second. And there you have it, our first angle problem. So the neater you keep your details, the easier this will be. All right, angle problem two. A camera on the ground 200 meters away from a hot air balloon. So let me just stop there. I have a camera that's laying on the ground here, so that's my camera is 200 meters away from this hot air balloon that rises into the sky at a constant rate of 10 meters per second. So this balloon is rising at 10 meters per second. How fast is the camera's angle of elevation changing when the balloon is 150 meters in the air? So let me connect those. It wants the camera's angle of elevation. Well, remember, elevation is what you get when you look up. So they are describing this angle here. They are describing this camera looking up into the sky or elevating to watch the uh, balloon. Um, when the balloon is 150 meters in the air. So I can easily go tell this side is 150 meters. So the question, of course, is what is the change of angle, d theta dt, at this time? 
So just like we did before, let's slap some variables on there, and I'm going to do, obviously do some double variables. I'm going to call this my side A, B, and C, just for the time being. So I actually know that this 200 represents B, this 150 represents A, and this 10 represents D, A, D, D. So again, I have side B, side A, I can go get side C. And just with a little Pythagorean theorem, I get a side of 250. Okay, so I'm just Pythagorean theorem off to the side. So that represents side C. All right, so the famous question is, do I have a constant? Is anybody guaranteed not to change? And if it is, I'm excited. Well, remember, this camera is 200 meters away. That is not changing. This balloon is certainly going up, so this side's changing, but this will always be 200 meters away. So I know side B is 200 is my constant. So I know I definitely want to use that in my angle. So I'm going to go ahead now and label my angles as hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Again, the hypotenuse should be the easy one. Adjacent's probably next. Adjacent means next to. Those two are next to it. One's already the hypotenuse. So that's my adjacent, and the one across is my opposite. So again, I'm going to pick the trig function that has the constant. So I'm just going to box that in, pick a different color here. I want to use this trig function because it's constant. And I'm also going to use the trig function that I know the most about. All right, so those are the two things I'm looking for, the constant and the one I know the most about. So now if I just say Sokotol in my head, who uses O and A? Well, that's tangent. So I'm going to say tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. Now I'm going to put it in terms of the problem. Tangent of theta equals my opposite side I called A, and my adjacent side I actually called B. Okay, so I'm just using the A that I originally called it and the B. And then I'm going to say one more step that I know the constant is 200, and that was side B, so tangent of theta equals A over 200. And then because, again, most people don't like fractions, I'm just going to quickly cross multiply and say this is 200 tan theta equals A. Okay, so again, I've done zero calculus. Now I'll bracket this in, take the derivative with respect to time. Again, when I read this, this is the tangent of theta. Watch your chain rule. So I'm going to say I get two, oops, 200. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Keep the inside. Derivative of the inside. Derivative of A, of course, is just D, A, D, T. All right, so at this point, I'm just going to carefully plug everybody in. This 200 is going to stay. This is secant of theta, and I have to square it because it's squared here. All right, so how do I get secant? Well, I say, okay, secant's the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So I'm just going to go back to my picture, look at my hypotenuse over my adjacent. So that is 250 over 200. Hypotenuse over adjacent, so 250 over 200. Notice it's squared, d theta dt. And then I need the rate of change of side A. So I look where I put my A. The rate of change was 10. And it was a positive 10 because it was going up. Okay, now I just have to clean this up. Now, let me show you another trick. I'm not actually going to square these, okay? I don't have time for that. Basically, what I'm saying in my head is 200... Well, watch how I rewrite this. I'm going to say this is 200, and I've got 250 squared over 200 squared. I just squared the top and bottom, right, when I square something. Now, that's convenient because this 200 will cancel with one of those. So I've got 250 squared over 200. d theta dt equals 10. And then, of course, I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal to kill this. 200 over 250 squared, 200 over 250 squared, and I can now clean it up and say d theta dt equals, um, let's see, that's 2,000 on top if I multiply the tops, and I can square 250 pretty simply. Hopefully you know that 25 squared is 625, and I'll add my two zeros on the end. And then I can reduce those zeros and say I have 20 over 625. And lastly, if you want to reduce that, that's fine. Let's see. 
Oh, they're both divisible by 5, so 4 over 125. And lastly, don't forget that is radians per second. Okay, radians per second. And there you have it. We've got two nice angle problems tonight. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. We've covered two similar triangles and two angle problems. Have a great night, and we'll see you tomorrow.